My name is Richard Moore, co-chair of the CSI group. Today's topic will be LEAD 2012 and CMP previews. The format today will be a 30-slide PowerPoint followed by a Q&A from the audience. We'll start off with uh, learning objectives, lead rating system updates, of course, major changes in 2012, why upgrade to lead AP with specialty, where many, many of you have not done yet, requirements for good credentialing maintenance program. First, we'll start off with why the rating systems are being updated. There are three key reasons affect market transfer information, increase scope and stringency, and incorporate new technologies. And what will 2012 look like? Increase the technical vigor of our current rating systems, as this uh, webinar will uh, soon approve. Expand the market sectors able to use lead, and improve the usability, functionality, and interconnectedness of rating systems. Currently, lead 2012 is under a second public comment period you can post a comment um, by September 14th, and uh, LEAD will um, uh, take into consideration all comments. So you have to September 14th to post a, a comment, and uh, at the end of this webinar, I'll give you a uh, website link to do that. Major changes in LEAD 2012 snapshot. There are three credit, new credit categories integrative process, location and transportation, and performance. There are seven new prerequisites that shows you that uh, LEED means well when it says it, it's making the LEED system more robust. And there are 20 new credits. Now I say a net three because uh, in LEED 2009 there are 56 credits, um, but in the new version of LEED there will be 53 credits. So they're, they're about the same, but just in uh, different weighting systems and uh, additional categories. I'll have a detailed review of the prerequisites and the same with the new credits. And point value and weightings process, it remains the same at 110. Now, this has not changed, fortunately the checklist will look like the old checklist, except for a few additions. We'll start off with integrative process, the new category. Um, the intent of this new category is to encourage project teams to understand key issues to be considered prior to design and to support interactive approaches aimed at achieving a high level of performance. And with that, the first credit uh, analysis to support an integrated process is a credit where you document that you've done that process and the, the next new credit is where you sh um, show that you have implemented those processes. So you get a point for each one. And the third credit was under ID in the old system and now is in this um, new category. And the major difference between uh, this ID credit and the old system is that at least one principal participant project team must shall be a lead AP with a specialty most appropriate for the project. So this is the one one of the reasons why you want to upgrade if you're a lead project administrator or a project manager and you want to sign off on that template you're going to have to have a specialty. Moving down, and that has uh, three possible credits for integrative process. Moving down to location and transportation, which has 16 possible points. Um, some of these points were taken from sustainable sites, and others are new. Uh, the first one is uh, similar to the old uh, sustainable sites credit one. Fundamental site selection. Next credit, enhanced site selection builds on the previous one. Uh, development density and diverse uses is similar to sustainable sites credit two. Next credit we have is quality transit and reduced vehicle miles traveled, VMT. 
this credit allows you to achieve uh, up to four points um, based on the number of stops um, of a, a transit system uh, next to your project. So depending on the number of stops, you get a point for each uh, next uh, threshold. And it also is based on the location of your project with uh, low VMT, vehicle miles traveled. Bicycle network storage and shower rooms is similar to the old credit. Walkable project site is to promote walking, biking, and other non-motorized transportation that results in reduced VMT, increased public health, and enhanced community participation. The main features here are uh, the project must have a, a main entry that faces a street, a square, or a park, uh, has continuous sidewalks, and have street trees planted every 40 feet at uh, walkways. So that should be an int interesting one to meet. Um, the next two reduced parking footprint is similar to the old sustainable size 4.4. And the next one, need for a neighborhood development location, it shows 16 points. And the reason for that is that if your project is within a lead neighborhood, you get all 16 points automatically. So that's why you see all these points here add up to 16, and you get them automatically if you earn credit 7. So that would be an easy way of doing it. The next topic is the old sustainable sites topic. It's um, dropped 14 points. Uh, a lot of those points went to location and transportation. Uh, the first one, construction activity pollution prevention, is similar to the old prerequisite. Next one, site assessment, is new. And uh, on that credit, you have to document site survey, which would include the topography, hydrology, on the air floodplain, climate, um, soil exposure and seasonal sun angles, vegetation, whether it's endangered species or invasive plants on your site, and soils that would uh, highlight the prime farmland or disturbed soils. Brownfield remediation is similar to brownfield redevelopment. Site development, protect or restore habitat uh, is the same. Uh, same with uh, open space. Um, the new SS5 rainwater management is uh, similar to the stormwater management SS61 and 62. Heat island reduction is similar to heat island effect uh, SS7172. And flight pollution credit is now credit seven, where in 2009 there was uh, SSC8. So there's a potential of 12 drop 14 points from the previous rating system. And I neglected to say that this webinar is focusing on need for new construction, because that's primarily the um, rating system that most uh, users will utilize. There are seven other rating systems, but uh, this will focus on new construction. So we're moving over to water efficiency. Water efficiency has dropped one point, so it almost remained the same, but it has um, gained two new prerequisites. Landscape water use reduction, which requires a 30% below baseline threshold uh, for peak water months for northeast, that's uh, the month of July. Um, the prerequisite two is similar to the old system and where there's a 20% below baseline requirement. And prerequisite three is new appliance and processed water was added. Moving down to the credit one, additional landscape water use reduction. The thresholds there are uh, reduced by 50%, you get one point, and then reduced by 100%, you get two points. For the next credit, two additional fixture fitting water use reduction 
uh, is more stringent than the previous one. The threshold of 35% is one point, 40% is two points, and 50% is three points. Moving down to credit three, sustainable wastewater management is more stringent than the previous rating system. If you reduce wastewater by 50%, you get one point. If you reduce it by 95%, you get two points. Or if you reduce, reuse, excuse me, reuse wastewater, and if you implement uh, rainwater reuse, you get one point. And if you reduce it by 90%, you get two points. So that's more stringent than the previous rating system. The next two are new cooling makeup water, tower makeup water. Uh, in the past, that's been an uh, innovation design credit. And finally, credit five, additional appliance and process water use is also new. Moving on to energy and atmosphere. Uh, that is, I'm going to go ahead. If this is man, I'm just going to sneak in here before we since we're about halfway done with this sheet. Uh, a couple little things here um, from the group. Um, one being um, from Arnell just asking as, as a general question, um, do we need to schedule um, workshops to achieve integration of high performance coal? I'm not sure if that's something we're going to address now or if that's something we're going to address later. Um, I'm not sure if that was a question related to this as a whole or something specific as a group. Um, mm -hmm. And then another uh, more of a statement from uh, Jonathan in the group indicating mm -hmm. that um, trees have a different drip line design uh, parameters. Uh, so I was wondering about mandating 40 feet on center may be a little bit too specific and whether if you had any information or um, additional um, reasoning behind that. Uh, uh, I don't. What I would do is highly recommend that you make a public comment if you think it should be different. And also, I'll put up on the screen here the uh, current uh, public comment draft. It's 185 pages. You could look at that, and I'll give you a website where you can uh, download this and uh, review the details of that um, those tree plantings. But I don't have further information on how that was obtained. OK. And then lastly, just wanted to clarify and make sure that we understood it correctly. Um, as it related to the uh, 16 credits uh, for location and transportation, just making sure that credit 7 was indicating that if the construction is within a lead neighborhood, they automatically get all 16. There isn't a total of 32 that needs to be added, correct? That, that's right. Yeah, that had me baffled as well. Um, there's 16 total points uh, possible, but that does not include 7. So if you get 7, you earn all credits by default. So that's, that, that's two distinct um, cases. That answers the question. Matt, are you OK at that? Yep. Yeah, that is not all I have currently, yeah. um, okay. so we'll see where we can go from there. Yeah, I'll continue with uh, energy and atmosphere, Great. which has dropped nine points. Um, but otherwise, uh, it remains pretty much the same. Uh, the prerequisite um, fundamental commissioning has moved to another category in the same with um, M and V. Measurement verification has moved to the performance category. Um, but otherwise, this one here remains pretty much the same. Uh, EA1 optimized energy performance now requires you to use the energy model to influence design. And the demand response is new. And the intent there is increased participation of demand response technologies and programs that make energy distribution systems more efficient and reduce environmental impacts and greenhouse gas emissions. So that's a, a good new addition to the EA category. And then finally, energy use mitigation. I don't know why they use the word mitigation versus green power, but essentially that is the green power credit. But it's far more stringent. You now have to have total energy, not just electricity energy. It has to be for a five-year term. For a 50% offset, you get one point. And for 100% offset, you get two points. Next category is material resources, which um, is uh, much related to specifications writer. And there's been a complete overhaul of this one. The prereqs stayed the same. 
the, the next one, new prereq requires you to meet 20% minimum of um, construction demolition uh, diversion. And very importantly, ADC or, or alternative daily cover is now banned. Now, from a personal viewpoint, I'm glad to see this. Uh, ADC has been a, a big loophole in uh, construction waste management. Uh, I have seen up to 6% of the diverted w waste in construction waste management plants go to ADC. Uh, they describe it as uh, road grading and shaping and for the amount of tons that apply to that, uh, it's hard to believe there's that much need for um, landfill cover. So this uh, new rating system will uh, ban ADC as uh, an option for construction C and D diversion, which is good to see. Next one is environment environmentally preferable structure and enclosure. That's similar to building reuse in the old system. It has many options in cases which we don't have time for here. But it, it does provide three points if you reuse a historic building, which is nice to see. Um, credit two, construction demolition debris management has um, some new thresholds. They've now separated demolition from a new construction. In other words, if you're demolishing a building before you build your new building, that's one case scenario. And then if you have new construction with no demo, you have another case. So under the first case, you can get 65%, you get one point, and if you meet 85%, you get two points. However, they limit uh, heavy materials to 75% of the total uh, tonnage. Under the second uh, scenario, if you have new construction only, there's no limits on ADC, asphalt, brick or concrete or steel, which are the heavy materials. And it's the old uh, benchmarks. For 50% offset, it's one point. For 75%, it's two point diversion. Excuse me. And they have a third case. If you divert 2.5 pounds of total waste, oh, if you don't exceed, excuse me, 2.5 pounds of total waste for the project, you can get a point. I don't know how you would document that, but uh, now on a, another note here, when they limit the, uh, the amount of heavy materials from the program, I don't know how that would be documented because most of my projects are co-mingled and uh, nothing is uh, separated. You just take the annual recycling rate from the co-mingling facility and that's the figure you use. So how you would separate uh, or minimize the heavy metals in those co-mingled containers it would be a very difficult um, proposition. So this may be good in theory, but in practice, I don't know how that would be um, documented on, on these new case scenarios for uh, MR2. Moving down to MR3, non-structural material transparency. This is a new credit. And requires transparency of information concerning environmental attributes. You have to meet one of the following criteria the manufacturer declared LCA or a third party certified environmental product declaration or EPD uh, based on generic product or based on a brand specific product. The thresholds here are 20% uh, you get one point and for 40% of the materials by weight you get two points. We'll be down to the next uh, on Worldly title, this probably has the longest title of all the um, credits, environmentally preferable non-structural products and materials prescriptive attributes, credit four. Uh, this credit four, I'm going to switch to another screen here.
Now, if you want to come back to the slideshow, I do have these um, detailed as individual slides, but I was just using the checklist for sufficiency. And here's uh, credit for. Go ahead. Richard, I was going to sneak in. Here was a there was a message here from Karen, just letting, I guess, more of a point of reference, saying that much of the country receives ports, reports from waste haulers with totals by material um, because they go to different destinations. Um, so. That's, that would be true if it's a source separated um, waste plant, meaning that you separate all the waste at, on the site. If you're commingling waste, you don't know what your, the breakup is for your project because all the waste goes on a common belt. There's no way they could tell you that, uh, and unless they do lead reporting on every single tip, there's no way they could tell you how much was uh, brick, how much was asphalt, how much was steel. They just don't track it in that manner. Uh, it, it'll be a challenging one to document, for sure. Okay, I, uh, I wanted to go to back to the slideshow to, to demonstrate uh, MR4. <clears throat> MR4 uh, relates to recycled content and uh, local materials. The intent here is to increase the use of materials with life cycles, ingredients, and attributes that improve environmental performances. And the benchmark is 50% uh, of the materials by weight, you get one point. And you have to meet one of the following criteria. A material reuse, recycled content, extended producer responsibility, um, i.e. closed loop product recycling programs like interface carpets uh, program where they take back the carpet, uh, support local economy, and the 500 mile radius is now out. It's now based on core based statistical areas. Uh, otherwise known by the new acronym of CBSA, and the final one is bio-based materials. So I have a, a map of this core-based statistical area. And I'll blow it up here so you can see it. The two types, the metros, there's 369 metro areas, and micros, there's 582, so they're in the blue, the metros in the red. So if you look at Boston, we use that as an example. The project was in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, that area would be this small outline right here. The, the 500 mile radius for Boston was all of New England and almost all of Pennsylvania. So now it's greatly reduced. So that's one point. The other point is that that does not include Canada or Mexico. And, a lot of our products come from Ontario or Quebec provinces, so I don't know how that would have been incorporated. And furthermore, I know that the manufacturers are just getting used to <laughs> giving us the information based on the 500 mile radius. Now for them to use this new reference point and to get it right, uh, it's going to be challenging. So this one here is going to be very uh, challenging to document once we get into leave 2012. I'm going to go back to the slideshow. So our next MR credit is responsible sourcing of raw materials. And I did a blow up here because this gets complicated, but it's important to spec write this. It's, excuse me, you have to provide 10% of the following by cost. This is the only one by cost. Everything else is by weight. MR5 is by cost. And there's uh, specific materials that this credit relates to, and they have to do with mined materials, concrete, glass, gypsum, masonry, stone, extracted plastics, minerals, um, good luck with plastics, and biomass, agrofiber, bamboo, and wood. And you have to meet one, both of the following conditions, raw material sourcing disclosure maintained by a third party, and responsible sourcing of raw materials. For biomass, it's uh, FSC pure, which is um, which means that all the wood has to be FSC certified. There's no partial claims. And for mined or quarried materials, it's framework for responsible mining. 
Um, how we get these documents from the manufacturers, I'm not quite sure of, but uh, this should be a very interesting credit to pursue. The next credit, and I'm going to go back up, is uh, MR6, Avoidance of Chemicals of Concern in Building Materials. And the benchmark there is 20% the minimum for building materials that must meet both of the following. Ingredient reporting, it's a third party or a self-declared reporting, which seems to me like an oxymoron. And the second reporting is chemical avoidance as listed in the California Toxic Enforcement Act of 1986. So that being said for materials and resources, there are references, there's a lot of new conditions, and under each credit there's multiple possibilities and it's going to be a challenge um, to document. So it's no longer business as usual. Uh, the specifications will have to be revamped for uh, 2012 when it comes to materials and resources and for environmental quality as well, which we'll get into next. So the next uh, category is environmental quality. Uh, the point system has not changed. It's still 15 points. Uh, the first two are similar. The third one is a new prerequisite. Uh, it's the former EQ 3.1 uh, during construction. That, that's good to see because uh, contractors are now used to doing that. The first credit is enhanced indoor air quality strategies. So what they did here was they combined the former EQ1, EQ2, and EQ5 all together in order to achieve this one point. And uh, those uh, former credits were outdoor delivery monitoring, increased ventilation, and indoor chemical and pollutant source control, which consisted of the MER media, entry grills, and copy and generator exhaust. So that, that one will be, uh, you, you will well earn that if you meet all these conditions. The next one is low interior materials, which is similar to EQ 1.4 through 1.1 through 1.4. Uh, however, it's more stringent because you have to improve the total percent compliance score. Uh, the next credit, three indoor air quality assessment has a, is more stringent. Uh, if you do the flush out, you get one point, but they now value IOQ testing more. So if you do IOQ testing, you get two points. Um, but you must include furniture. And in the past, that was uh, discretionary, but now it's mandatory that you include furniture if it's in the uh, project scope. Um, thermal comfort is uh, similar. Interior lighting is new. There's conditions on the uh, limits on the interior lighting. Uh, daylight is uh, similar, quality of views is similar to 8.1, and acoustical performance is also new. Moving down to the last new category, performance. Uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of the lawsuit against uh, USGBC, so they're they're showing that they're they're putting their uh, money where their mouth are with uh, all these requirements. Yes, Richard, Matt? before we go, there there was just uh, another point here from Jonathan. I just wanted to make to the group, see if you have any background history on that or whether or not um, it's oh, maybe he should just recommend um, for MRC6 uh, indicated that potentially there should be 100% avoidance to equal the credit. Not sure if you had any point of topic on that um, or if that would be another thing that you'd recommend that he potentially give as a comment. So the question was that um, it uh, the benchmark right now is 20 percent, and he's recommending 100 percent. Correct. He said MRC six should be 100 percent on board. Oh, okay. Yeah. Credit. Well, this is the time to make that comment. Uh, it's set at 20 percent, and and they do listen to you, so you can have influence in this process. If you think it should be 100 percent, then I would highly recommend that you file a comment online, and I I'll give you the the reference to that web link at the end of this seminar. Okay. So we're, we're at the new category performance. Um, 
in the future will be known as PF. Uh, water metering is new. Building level energy metering is new. Uh, fundamental commissioning has moved over from the EA category and the same with enhanced commissioning. Monitoring-based uh, commissioning is new. Uh, under enhanced commissioning, it's now required that the building envelope and plumbing be commissioned under uh, PFC1. And moving down to four, advanced energy metering. It's similar to um, the old EA5 measurement verification. And finally, the last one, PFC5, builds on uh, the previous one. Um, measurement verification. Finally, innovation, they broke it up into three categories. Uh, uh, the point system is the same. This, you can earn six credits, um, but they put a cap on exemplary performances uh, to two points, and otherwise you can use pilot credits or uh, you have options for open credits. And finally, regional priority has not changed. It's still four points based on your zip code and uh, specific credits. OK, so we got to the 2012 new rating system, at least building construction. Now we'll go through the why you should upgrade the lead AP with specialty. Uh, the new logo, if you do have lead AP especially, is on the right side, and this is the old logo. Uh, first off, there's no more exams. Uh, your new first renewable, renewable fee will be waived. Um, you would keep current green building practices, technologies, and evolution of lead. Uh, as I mentioned, you would earn the point for integrated process credit three which if you're a project administrator or a project manager, you would probably want to be able to sign off on like myself. And finally, you can earn multiple specialties uh, under this new system. Uh, here are the new logos. Uh, lead building design construction will look like this. The lead fellow, which will, is about to be announced soon, uh, will have that little reef around it. And there are uh, four others, uh, operations, maintenance, interior design, and construction, which I will probably pursue as well because I have clients who have projects in uh, interior design, lead AP for homes, and lead AP for neighborhood development. And uh, Richard, two, yes, oh, go ahead. two more things to sneak in here quick. Yeah. Um, another little uh, question here from Jonathan asking, um, what has, if anything, we done to address durability in this revision? Um, and then the second one is more of a statement just indicating that it looks like regional credits will not be zip code based, um, with the statement of being, we are all working on new credits right now from Karen. And if that one needs more clarification, Karen, I may ask you to uh, unmute your line, but we'll see what Richard has for comments first. Yeah, I'm not aware that the um, regional credits will not be based on zip codes. That would be new to me. Um, and as far as durability, it would probably come under uh, environmentally preferable non-structural products and materials. But uh, what I would do is go through this um, first draft of the public comment um, edition and see if there's more information there. Otherwise, you can make a comment. But I, I don't have that answer um, directly. So I hope that helps. And um, I think that addressed that one. And uh, Karen, I guess um, if you have anything else to do, I guess just leave me something quick in the chat or the question. Let me know if you'd let me to. Um, oh, uh, she's not on the phone, so she apologizes for that. But just indicated that each chapter has been tasked with creating a reference on what the uh, the RP credits uh, should be. And it is certain they will not be zip code based. Oh. Uh, so okay. that could be some good information for all of us to go off of there. Yeah, OK. I'll, I'll have to look into that further myself as well. Um, okay. Thank her for that. And then we also have a question here from Mark indicating with lead EB, um, 
Where are existing buildings being addressed currently? Uh, is that Mark Kalin? It is or not. That is Mark DeBacker. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't have details of all the rating systems. So if you go to the um, website that uh, I will provide later, you can go into that specific draft um, for that rating system, but I don't have that answer either. But I'm going to give you some statistics now and show you why the building design construction is uh, important to, to so many spec writers and uh, designers. So here's the lead professional statistics at a glance. They're right now 34,000 lead APs for specialties. And if you look down here, there's 111,000 without specialty that haven't done anything yet. And then that gives you the breakdowns uh, between the rating systems. Uh, B, D, and C by far is the most heavily used rating system. And, and that's why my webinar is focused on here. The other ones, uh, there are lead APs, but uh, as you can see here, they're, they're small comparatively. And for professions, architects are at the top of the line, and construction managers, and thereafter mechanical engineering, project management, interior design. These are the top five. It doesn't list all the memberships, but that's interesting to see as well. And these figures are, are of March 1st, 2011. Now, requirements for credentialing. Uh, enrollment window ends October 20th for you 111,000 uh, lead APs out there. You have to make a decision. Uh, lean Green Associates have to earn 15 uh, learning units. And it's a $50 renewal fee every two years. Lead AP with specialty must in, earn twice that, 30 Cs, with the same $50 renewal fee. And if you're upgrading, there's a you have to earn 24 prescriptive minimum hours. That's the only difference in the, the, the CE hours. They have to be prescriptive minimum hours, which I'll show you a detail of in a minute. And then if you want multiple specialties, then it's the 30 hours plus an additional six for each specific specialty. So if you wanted uh, E, D, and C, and interiors, you would have to earn the 30 plus a 6 or 3, 6. Uh, here's the delivery methods. Yep, go ahead. Richard, one more here uh, from Mark, more of a guess of a clarification. Um, the new ops and maintenance uh, no longer seems to include alterations to existing buildings. And he just wants to know, is that correct? Um, and in the case that new construction does not seem to have expanded existing building alterations. Uh, is he referring to a, a, a different rating system? Operations maintenance? Mm. Did, did, is that uh, the rating system you referred to? Perhaps it, it says ops and maint is what it's it's yeah. shortened to. Yeah, so. that's a different rating system. Um, that, again, I'm, I'm not um, that familiar with that rating system, so I couldn't uh, address that. And what was the other question? And the other one um, was, do the multiple specialties require twice the 30 plus 6 or just the plus six? Just the plus six. Right, so if you wanted two specialties, it would be 36 hours per year. OK, and then here's the delivery methods, uh, professional development, live presentations, self-study, college and university courses, certificates, volunteer work, authorship, and lead project participation, which is my favorite. Uh, ones with the asterisk lead have tracking forms that are very helpful to, to fill out to, uh, to use. Now, I used my report form just to show you some details of this. So if you do a lead upgrade, you have to earn these 24 prescriptive, excuse me, prescriptive minimum hours. And this is the only difference. If you take the test over again, if you're already lead with specialty, you just uh, go under these, this category right here. But with, for upgrades, you have to earn these specific credits under these categories. So that's the only difference. And that's for, only for the first reporting period. Thereafter, you can uh, do whatever you want. OK. 
and that back to the slideshow. And here's the detail again of my report showing all the activity that I posted uh, to earn these credits. Uh, lead project uh, participation is my favorite because it's an easy one for me. Um, and I'll show you a sample form of that as well. So you, you would fill out the forms in this fashion and uh, they're pre-approved within a few days. It's, they're very quick on um, um, approving these credits. And if they have issues, which sometimes they do, I'll show you here. There's issues with it. They'll come up with this note telling you that you did something wrong and you can't claim a credit for that particular category, um, and, and they'll tell you the reason. And that, that's what they did indeed here do. They told me that I couldn't use a certain um, credit for this category had to come over in this category. So they're pretty efficient. And finally, here's a sample tracking form. So if you're a lead project, uh, if you participate in lead projects, you fill out this form, uh, name, GPCI number, give the project name, and then you identify the projects you work on. Now, there are two ways of doing it. You, you can work on a credit but not sign off on it and still get credit or if you signed off on it, then it's automatic credit. And these are the credits I worked on, and plus I got two hours of credit for being the project administrator. If you're not a project administrator, then you have to get a employer's attestation for each credit that you claim you've done work on. So you can still get the credit, but it requires another document. And with that, yeah, that was the last prop. Um, we're at the uh, website. Uh, I put this one up here. Or, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Richard. Before we go in, uh, one question here from Arnell. Um, do they still need to upload supporting documents to go with all the different forms you just showed? Right. Uh, you okay. do not. Those tracking forms are your, for your um, personal use. If you were audited, they would ask for them. But uh, I guess their their rate for audits are down around ten percent. But um, you know, I I do those tracking forms just because it's easy uh, to to file. But you do not have to upload those. You just fill in the the blanks. And uh, by doing the tracking form, it also helps you uh, figure out what to fill in. So the answer is no. You don't have to upload them. Any um, other? Ready. Yep. We have a couple more here. Uh, one of them here from, I am not going to try to pronounce your name because I'm sure I'll get it wrong, um, but what is the disadvantage advantage to upgrade from lead AP to lead AP specialties? Uh, as it appears, it does not require the individual to have lead specialties for anything that we currently talked about. Right. I'm going to go back to the slide that addresses that, and I'll make a comment. All right, here are the reasons why. Um, if you're a lead AP and you, you never sign off on credits, or you're not a project administrator, then you do not have to upgrade uh, because you'll never be in a situation where you need to sign off on this uh, integrative process credit three. Um, you know, maybe a couple of rating systems down the road that will require more uh, team participants to have a lead with specialty, but right now they don't. So you could stay as you are, but if you have any plans on uh, taking credits from the project you've worked on, then I would recommend it. And plus it keeps you current with the uh, uh, building practices and the evolution of LEAD. So I hope that answers it. Yeah, and then we have one another question here. I'm wondering um, if the, the documents that you're showing here, the CMP documents, are they only for LEAD 2012 or are they in effect sooner? Okay, which documents uh, did you say? Uh, the the new CMP, CMP documents. Yep. Um, okay, that's a good question. I don't think they're changing the CMP program with this new version of uh, LEAD 2012. I think it's going to remain the same. And these documents I have up on the screen now are right from uh, PPCI's 
DPCI's website. So I'm just downloading the, the documents that they provide on their website. But to my knowledge, the, the CMP program is staying the same because it's fairly new. So I hope that answers the question. Any others, Matt? At this point, we're good. OK. Now, so the final slide here is the uh, useful websites. Uh, the first one is showing that uh, metro and macro statistical areas. That will be a, a good one to uh, grasp your hands around. Uh, so if you want to make a public comment, a uh, number of uh, People from the audience had uh, comments, and uh, this is the site to go to, Lead 2012 development page, uh, where you can post a public comment. And also, you could get this um, design and construction uh, comment draft on that website as well. Uh, if you you want to upgrade, you go to C the CMP enrollment website, which is here. And if you have any other questions on the CMP, program, go to the CMP WISIT website. That's a very good site. And you can download those um, tracking forms I mentioned um, previously from from this site. And then finally, uh, this was just a brief review of the rating systems. But uh, if you are attending Green Bill, they'll have a, a full lead 2012 review on Friday session SL15. And you can earn up to 12 and a half uh, hours for attending Green Bill. Uh, and, and these uh, credits are also good for AIA uh, members. And you have a choice of 23 lead-specific courses at uh, Green Bill in Toronto. And uh, don't forget your passport. Other questions? Because I think I'm ahead of the schedule. Uh, learning objectives reviewed. Let me just go through the slide, and I'll take up questions from the audience. Uh, leading rating systems updates affect mock transformation, increase the technical rigor of the rating systems. The main changes are there are three new categories, seven new prerequisites, and actually there's 20 new credits in the point system. It stayed the same. But the significant changes where you'll have to redo your uh, green specs. Why upgrade to lead professional development and to sign off on that uh, uh, new credit IP C3. Otherwise, you can stay as lead IP if you have uh, never have a need to sign off on credits or to be a lead IP, especially on a project team, which is uh, probably most uh, specification writers. And then requirements for a CMP, you have to earn 30 hours and pay a $50 biennial fee. And again, if you're upgrading, you have to meet that those 24 prescriptive minimum hours. And if you want uh, multiple specialties, you add six hours to the 30 for each uh, specialty that you want up to upgrade to. So with that, are there questions? There are. There is uh, one question, and then minutes. I guess more of a uh, one question, and then one statement at the moment. One of them being, can uh, your CMP credit carry over to your next reporting? Uh, "Quote unquote two-year period." If you take more than thirty points worth of credits ah. in any one two-year period, uh, carryover. I think the question is, AIA allows you to carry over uh, a maximum amount of points, and I don't recall reading anything on the CMP guy that allows you to carry over. So that would, might be a good question to put to GBCI. Right now, and, I don't think they allow it. Yep, and Karen, who's on the line, who says she's actually a uh, She's one of her chapter's heads uh, indicated that as of right now, that is a no. Um, okay. So that may be, some, <laughs> that may be okay. something for us to look at in the future. Um, there and you then go. Karen, also, Karen also has um, um, more of a statement slash request for you all here. If you agree with her, um, stating she can imagine how the proposed MR credits can, um, can be possible, um, can possibly be written into good specs. And she feels strongly that we need to communicate math um, with the public comments for you all if you agree with her. Mm -hmm. um, that they're they are pushing way too far, too fast for manufacturers to be able to respond appropriately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have to agree with her because the MR category has really 
raised the bar on the documentation requirements. I mean, we, if we thought we we had it tough before getting uh, these letters from the manufacturers, the detail of uh, the many reference uh, references and uh, conditions under the new MR credits are going to be challenging. So she's um, uh, certainly right on that end. And uh, for, for those you, of you who agree, I would highly recommend that you post a public comment. Are there other questions? Robert just wants to clarify that uh, he heard correctly that the second uh, two-year period of a CMP does not have specific categories to fulfill. Is that correct? That, that is correct. Uh, as I'm going to go to that. Um, if you're upgrading to uh, the with specialty, you have to earn those 24 credits in this column. Um, thereafter, in reporting periods, and reporting periods are every two years, you can choose uh, anything from the, um, the, the chart shown here. So it's only in the first reporting period if you're upgrading. If you take the test or, or you're already lead with specialty, you do not have to meet the prescriptive. But they're only for upgrades. So I think that's what he meant, and he's correct. We'll, we'll stay on the line here for just a few more seconds, but if you have any other questions, feel free to also email me afterwards, and I can pass it along directly to uh, both Richard and Mark, who could not make today's call. My email address will be in the chat feature, which is just mfochs at csinet.org. So again, that's mfochs at csinet.org. And pass along any other questions you'd have, and we can go from there to passing those on to Richard and hopefully helping you get those questions answered. Um, with that, we look forward to meeting some of you in Chicago at Construct. Please feel free to stop by the booth, meet me. Um, Mark will be there again. Unfortunately, Richard will not be able to make it. Um, and look forward to talking to you again either in September at our meeting or in the upcoming event in October as we have another exciting presentation for you all scheduled then as well.